Welcome again uh, to our webinar on Becoming a CFP Board Win Advocate. Um, I am Marilyn Mormon Gillis. I am Managing Director for Public Policy and Communications at CFP Board, and I am joined by Eleanor Blaney, CFP, who is CFP Board's Consumer Advocate and Win Advisor. Before we proceed with the webinar, let me just mention a few housekeeping items. If you run into any issues with audio for this presentation, or it seems like the slides may be out of sync, just try refreshing your webinar console. To do that on your PC, press F5. If you are using a Mac, press Command-R. You'll see a question and answer function on the right side of your screen, and you can use that any time during the program to submit questions. We'll try to address as many questions as possible during the Q&A at the end of the presentation. And if we don't get to your question today, we will definitely follow up with an answer. All of you have been invited because you indicated an interest in volunteering for our WIN initiative. I'm pleased to say that we've had an overwhelmingly positive response to our initiative since we released our WIN white paper at a significant event in April of this year in New York City. Some of you may have attended that event or some of you may have read or heard about our initiative in, an, in another way. Uh, we are most grateful to you for your interest. Uh, today we're going to focus on one way our WIN volunteers can get involved, and that's our WIN Advocate Initiative. In today's webcast, we're going to provide you with a very brief overview of the initiative, uh, a brief overview of some important findings of the research and the recommendations, and what CFP Board will do as a leader and a catalyst in, this, um, uh, in connection with these initiatives. Then we'll turn to the role that our WIN advocates can play and the tools and resources that we are going to be providing to our WIN advocates. We're going to leave plenty of time for Q&A, um, so uh, please go ahead and, and at any point in time uh, indicate any questions that you might have. WIN was launched by CFP Board in early 2013 under the leadership of Nancy Kistner, who at the time was chair of CFP Board's Board of Directors. Nancy is Managing Director at U.S. Trust Bank of America uh, for Private Wealth Management. Um, <clears throat> The WIN initiative uh, seeks to address the chronic shortage of women CFP professionals. It is still amazing to me that there are only 23% women who are CFP, 23% prof uh, uh, women CFP professionals, and that that statistic has remained static for 10 years. So the WIN initiative is looking at the barriers. What can we do? What are the root causes? What can we do to increase the representation of women? We started by convening an advisory panel. This panel consists of prominent CFP professional women, experts on diversity and recruitment, uh, and we convened this panel to help us develop the hypotheses, help us design our research, test our hypotheses, and, uh, and give us recommendations on findings and implications, as well as recommendations for what we can do about it. Um, we recognize our sponsors, TD Ameritrade and Ameriprise, uh, who helped with significant funding of this initiative. Nancy Kistner explained the goals of our WIN initiative at our event in New York in April. Uh, and at which we released the WIN white paper and started the conversation about what we can do to address the problem. But for those who, of you who were not there, we had standing room turnout with passionate and committed men and women who want to be part of the solution. Um, let's hear from Nancy uh, about her um, uh, goals for the initiative. And let me just note that we'll be pausing for a few seconds after the video is finished to accommodate viewers with slower internet speed. So as far as the mission, threefold. First, to identify the challenges that women face in pursuing a career in financial planning and obtaining the CFP certification. So we've got to understand what those challenges are. Second is to recommend solutions to increase the ranks not only of women CFP professionals, but to also strengthen the financial planning profession now and getting it ready for the future. And then thirdly, to lay the groundwork 
for focused initiatives that the CFP board could undertake to address this feminine famine, we call it, in financial planning, and to increase the number of women CFP professionals. Our WIN initiative is defined by three key phases. In phase one, we developed hypotheses and engaged, engaged in a year-long research effort to determine the root causes of this chronic underrepresentation of women. Our research included three separate studies anchored by a groundbreaking qualitative and quantitative study in which we collected data from a wide range of targets that included financial professionals, men and women, CFP professionals and non-CFP professionals, students and educators, and those professionals in financial services firms who are responsible for hiring. We released in phase two our white paper, which synthesized the research and developed a set of findings and recommendations. Eleanor, our principal author of the white paper, will give you a synopsis of those in a few seconds. And in phase three, we are in the implementation stage of our recommendations. As I often say, this is a marathon, not a sprint. CFP board hopes to be a catalyst for initiatives, but we need many partners. And our WIN advocates will be important partners in our effort to communicate our WIN messages. Now let me turn it over to Eleanor, who will uh, give you a brief synopsis of the important findings and recommendations of our WIN research. Eleanor? Thank you. Thank you, Marilyn, and welcome to all our listeners today. It's great to have you with us today. Um, I'm going to be summarizing the major findings from the WIN research that we did, and I have it on two slides, but just recognize that this was a year-long study, both qualitative, we ran focus groups, as well as a survey. Uh, so there's a lot crammed into the, these two slides of findings, and I certainly recommend that you go and get our white paper. If you do not have it, you can go online and download a copy um, to read in more depth and get more of the con context of some of these findings. I think you'll find them very interesting. But I want to share with you the real top-line results, and here we go. Well, first of all, the, uh, and this is not necessarily a, a surprising finding, but nevertheless it's very important, and that simply is that, um, no, I'm sorry, let me just back up. The first finding has to do with the population of uh, financial advisors. This includes CFPs, but it's a bit broader population. What we did is we just want to understand what do women financial advisors, what do they look like, particularly as they may differ from um, men financial advisors, and what might that be able to tell us about uh, the situation and the gender, the low numbers of women in financial planning. So very briefly, what we found is that the average female advisor relative to the average male advisor is younger. She is less experienced, which goes along with the age differential. She's more likely to be paid a salary as opposed to a commission-based compensation or even a performance uh, AUM type of compensation. She, and finally, she is, and this is the most unfortunate finding, but nonetheless it's true, she is paid less. Now, when we talk about being paid less, we did hold constant in the research um, three variables. One is her experience, her years of experience. Two was the amount of revenue production. And third was ownership status. So in other words, we compared men and women who had the same number of years of experience, ownership status, and revenue production. The same, they were situated in the same place um, professionally in the in the financial advisory field. Unfortunately, we found even keeping those uh, variables constant, we found that our female financial advisor was being paid approximately $32,000 less per year than the average male advisor. This obviously is a very important finding for thinking about why we may not have enough women or how, why it is that not enough women are being attracted into our field. 
Now, secondly, this is the finding that uh, that is relatively simple, basic, and, and, and maybe even obvious, but nonetheless has very important implications for the solution. And that simply is that financial planning, the field of financial planning, and the CFP certification in terms of what is required and what CFPs do, these are simply not top of mind issues for women. They're, they are not thought of, uh, financial planning is not often considered as a career path by women. This compares to men who are far more familiar both with financial planning as well as the CFP certification. So there is a true information asymmetry here between men and women about our field. And as we say, if you don't know, it, you're probably not likely to go into the profession. Your first step is you've got to understand what, uh, what financial planning means. So that was a major finding. Then we also found that what women believe they may know about financial planning is in fact very different from the actual facts or truth about financial planning. One of the major things that we found both in the qualitative work that we did before the quantitative work was that there was such there was just a big divide between women CFPs and women elsewhere in the profession who without their CFPs their attitudes were very different career satisfaction was very different with the women CFPs having a much higher um, enjoyment of what they were doing and feeling that they were empowered and, and energized by what they did relative to women in financial services in general. Many women, um, we call them sort of on the outside of the, of the CFP profession, tend to think of financial planning as very numbers driven. They tend to think of it as, and we'll, I know we'll all recognize this story, as all about investment, about markets. Whereas women with their CFP describe uh, financial planning as a holistic discipline. It's about building relationships. And in fact, the number one skill that they attribute to their field, to their, their profession, is being good listeners, being um, good communicators. And it's not that esoteric financial or financial market information. So two alternate universes that are very, very different. Fourth, women's own behaviors. We do. Women do play a role in, um, in, the, in, in accounting for these low numbers. There are really two behaviors that were discussed or addressed in the research, one being that women tend not to advocate for themselves. Uh, this has become very familiar through the Sheryl Sandberg recent book, Lean In, that we're not our own best friends in terms of, uh, of advancing our careers. And even women that were in the survey acknowledged that this is a problem. The second behavior has to do with risk aversion. And this, is, this may, in fact, be associated with compensation methods or the risk that it takes to come into the profession. For many women, they find it daunting to come into a profession and immediately be on a you know, production uh, track where they, they will make what they produce and not having that opportunity to learn the profession or to apprentice or even to work on a team. And um, so the risk aversion, particularly with respect to compensation models and business models, may also be a factor accounting for the low numbers of women. The next finding is a big one and a tough one, certainly, and that has to do with gender discrimination and bias. This is a, 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 a current social and cultural discussion that crosses across many, many professions, but it exists in our profession as well. Um, we found it in our survey results. It was pretty, pretty uh, not exactly unanimous, but very high numbers reporting, both women and men reporting, that yes, men are more likely to be hired in the financial planning profession, and certainly men are more apt to make, are made to feel welcome in the profession. 
Um, and obviously the flip side of that is that women feel decidedly unwelcome. Another bias or discrimination factor that was really interesting to us as we reviewed this findings was this notion of, of um, that, that existed primarily at the level of firms. And that had to do with this whole idea of who makes a better financial advisor, a financial planner, who makes a better CFP professional, a man or a woman. Now, when we asked that to firms, most of them said they were neutral. So there were 51% of the firm executives who answered that question who said, you know, neither gender prevails on that context. But those who did have a gender preference were decidedly on the side that men make better financial planners. So we have that. But then there was another part of the survey where skills and attributes were broken down. It wasn't just who's the better planner, but who has the better training? Who has the advantage with respect to working with women clients? Who has strong ethics? So there were a number of attributes. And in, when, we, when the attributes were actually given one by one, in all cases, women were assumed to have that attribute or that characteristic in higher numbers and significantly higher numbers than men. So there was a real disconnect, this idea that men are more qualified or they're certainly more prevalent. We know that from the numbers, but that, that men are more likely are the better planners. But when you really, the rubber meets the road and we begin to look at attributes and qualifications, women are seen by these same firms as highly desirable candidates and prospects for financial planning. That is problematic. Then another finding what had to do with the whole work-life balance, this was one issue our advisory panel wanted us to look into, and that is, is, is do women find financial planning um, uh, unfriendly or intimidating in terms of their own requirements for work-life balance? Now, I will say parenthetically, this is no longer a women's issue. We're finding younger men who are as keen on being able to find the time to, you know, coach soccer and all these things. But um, we wondered if this was a problem, that financial planning, you know, demanded long hours or were too, was too stressful. Uh, was this a deterrent? In fact, the women that we spoke to, students, and uh, students in particular, and in many cases these were young women who might very much have the idea of families, on their minds. They did not bring this up. And in fact, many of them said no, they saw financial planning as offering tremendous flexibility in terms of hours, when and where you work. They thought it was a very generous profession in that regard. However, again, when we talked to the firms, they were far more likely to see a problem in hiring women because they believed that women would cut and run and they were not saying this about young men. So again, we have a disconnect here that's problematic and certainly tells us something about why it may be harder for women. Then finally, there's the last observation we wanted to make. And this was very widespread consensus that we don't have enough female role models in the profession. We certainly lack support networks and professional development. And this, again, is maybe obvious, and I kind of call this the circular argument where, okay, we have 23% of CFP professionals who are women. We have very low numbers. Hence, we do not have many role models. Without more role models, we don't have women. So we're back to where we started from. So clearly, a very proactive uh, um, measures are needed to break up that vicious cycle and, and create the impetus and the energy to get more women trained and inspired by other, um, other models within the profession. So those were our major findings, and those lead directly into some of the general recommendations that the report made. Um, they're, they're targeted very much towards the findings. So for example, one 
major recommendation is we need to correct the misperceptions that so many women, again, I'm going to say on the outside of our profession, hold about what it is that we as CFP professionals do. In other words, to dispel the notion that it's all, you know, number crunching and spreadsheets and that it in fact is a much more vital um, helping profession and relationships and demands a holistic approach. Certainly, we need to educate those people who are in the pipe, in career pipelines to put financial planning on their radar, um, to educate them as to what financial planning is about and what it means, that it is not just simply Wall Street or investment banking, that it is a, a field unto itself and that, in fact, it makes a great career for women. We certainly want to make women leaders more visible. As I was just talking about, we need more faces. We need more stories for young girls, for students, even career changers to relate to, to know that they are welcome to. Then on the firm side, I call this the, the environmental management, things that we need to do in the profession to make our profession um, more welcoming to women, and that is top management needs to be encouraged. Top management at firms need to understand that it is important that, that they commit to measurable gender diversity goals. This is being done in the publicly held, the corporate world of public firms. Shareholders are watching about gender initiatives, and we need to take this model into our firms. Many of us are privately held, we're much smaller, but we aspire to the same business discipline and integrity of the corporate world. We need to encourage firms to adopt transparent compensation structures and offer alternative forms of compensation, particularly to entry-level women, who many of whom may be supporting children, they may be the primary breadwinner in their family. They need to have some assurance that they will have a baseline salary as they learn the, the profession, as they come into the profession. Um, this may be proved to be attractive to a lot of women who would otherwise not consider entering because they can't afford to be without a regular fixed income for a period of time. And then finally, uh, it's back to the networks and the sponsorship, um, creating programs for women, networking programs for women, and training to teach them, you know, about what it means to be a financial planner and particularly I, I'll never forget one of our advisory panel members, Win Advisory Panel, said, we need to teach women what a career path looks like. Many of them get their CFP, they get their certification, they're there, and then they say, now what? What happens next? What do I do to advance and move forward? We need to pay attention to the idea that women um, need a roadmap into financial planning. Now, with that, I'm going to turn it back to Marilyn, and she's going to talk about what CFP Board is proposing or is, is ready to do as a leader uh, in the financial planning profession. Thanks, Eleanor. As uh, Eleanor said, CFP Board hopes to be a leader and a catalyst in this effort to encourage more women to embrace the profession of financial planning and to secure their CFP certification. We made specific commitments in the white paper, and we intend to follow through. Uh, the first is uh, we have created a WIN Council. The Council is a board-approved um, Council to advise uh, our WIN implementation efforts. And so to Eleanor's point, at the very highest level of the organization, there is a commitment to this effort. Um, <clears throat> we are committed to conducting an internal review uh, to make sure that our uh, departments and functions are aligned with the WIN mission. We plan to launch in 2015 what we're calling the Faces of CFP Professionals. This is to get the stories of successful women CFP professionals out there to motivate and inspire women. We are um, designating WIN advocates. That's where you all come in. We are partnering with select firms to conduct pilot projects on gender diversity initiatives that are consistent with where the firm is and what the firm hopes to accomplish. And we are um, developing conference programs and workshops as well as speaking in conference uh, uh, programs and workshops 
uh, to get the WIN message out. Kathleen McQuigan, um, who is a CFP Board WIN Council member and was on our advisory committee as well, and is Senior Vice President of Global Women's Strategies for PAX World, uh, spoke at our release event in New York City, and she made an impassioned case for the importance of fostering women leaders, particularly in financial services. Let's listen. So I'm here today to ask you to help me with my niece in kindergarten. I'd like to be able to tell her, make yourself the best you can be, educate yourself, learn a business, build your network, and one day you could become a CFP or even a CEO of a company. And we here today can all make this happen for my niece, for your daughters, for your granddaughters. As my friend Jackie Zayner always says, you can't do everything, but you can do something. So I would challenge all of you today to commit to one thing that you will do when you go back to your office. What one action can you take to increase gender equality and women's leadership in your company and in the world? Kathleen challenged everyone to take action, and we are inviting you today to become a CFP Board WIN advocate. So what does this involve? First, it involves telling your own story. How did you become a CFP professional? What motivated you to get the certification and to go into financial planning? What were your challenges? Um, what have been your opportunities? Why do you think this is a great profession for women? You can write an article on WIN for newsletters in your membership organizations or your um, alumni uh, publications. For those of you who are with firms, you can play a key role to raise awareness within your firms, urge your firm to partner with us on a pilot project, urge your firm to make a visible, financial, vocal commitment to increasing the number of women, uh, CFP professionals by setting measurable goals, and encourage this commitment to start at the very top. Offer to speak uh, as a WIN advocate uh, to target audiences, and these can include uh, colleagues in, in um, uh, financial service or other businesses, and it can include uh, uh, career centers, both at the college and the high school level. It can include girls groups, such as uh, Invest in Girls and the Girl Scouts. Identify speaking opportunities at firm and professional conferences for CFP Board to talk about WIN, and stay in touch with us on your activities. We have created a comprehensive toolkit for support of our WIN advocates to get the WIN message out. Uh, this toolkit includes scripted presentations, uh, PowerPoint and notes intended for uh, a general audience as well as specific professional audiences. It includes short video clips on WIN to use in the presentation, fact sheets on WIN research, and a set of frequently asked questions that can arm you with, uh, with uh, answers to questions you may receive. We also have a communications set of tools and templates, including a sample letter to send to organizations that you might be interested in hosting a, a, um, a WIN presentation, a summary of the presentation materials, presentation tips, sample tweets, and a list of women's organizations that you may consider contacting to do a WIN, a win presentation. So how do you become a WIN advocate? Uh, to uh, become a WIN advocate, you must be a CFP professional in good standing. So what does this mean? Uh, no public disciplinary history and not under investigation for any potential violation of CFP board's rules. Um, we invite you to go to our WIN page and to complete a very simple online form. You see the um, website there at cfp.net slash WIN advocate. Um, once you register with us, we will send you instructions on how to access the WIN toolkit 
and of course, uh, we will always be available as a resource. Uh, the terms of use are very simple and straightforward, that you may only use our toolkit in WIN activities, um, uh, and this may only be used by CFP professionals who have been designated as WIN advocates by CFP boards. Um, you're not authorized to give this toolkit to anyone else for any other purposes. But if you know other CFP professionals who are interested in becoming WIN advocates, please definitely send them our way and refer them to our WIN page to uh, sign up. So at this point, what we'd like to do is um, uh, stop and entertain any questions that you all might have. Um, <clears throat> So we have a question, uh, can you give more information on the firm level pilot program that was just mentioned? The, what we are, are hoping to do with the pilot program is to work with a variety of firms with different business models and essentially meet the firm where they are at whatever stage they are in their efforts to engage in uh, diversity efforts, particularly focused on women. We would work with the firm to support an initiative that is firm specific and is targeted to what their um, outcomes and goals are. Uh, so we're having preliminary discussions right now with some firms that have reached out to us. And if you or your firm are interested, we welcome you to contact us at win at cfp.org. Okay, um, some additional questions we have. Um, so uh, we have a question related to faces of women CFP professionals. Uh, with regard to this initiative, we are planning to launch this in 2015. Uh, our intent is that it will be a very well-produced uh, video that will feature women CFP professionals who are successful in the profession, who can tell their story, uh, what motivated them to become a CFP professional, uh, uh, what, were their, what, what were their challenges, what are the opportunities uh, to encourage other women to enter the profession. Uh, if you are interested in this project, uh, you can be helpful in two ways. Number one, if you are with a firm or an organization that would like to make a commitment uh, to the WIN initiative. Uh, uh, we would very much appreciate a financial commitment uh, to this effort. Uh, this is, is going to be a um, highly produced video that obviously will cost money, so we would appreciate financial support. If you uh, believe that you have a story that is motivational uh, for women CFP professionals, we welcome you to contact us at win at CFP org and, and let us know of your interest uh, to, um, uh, to be part of that event and part of that initiative. Um, so uh, the next question is, uh, does any event, event in which we are a speaker, do we need to get prior approval? Eleanor? Yes, um, that's a great question. Well, first of all, you need the prior approval of simply registering or getting the approval as a WIN advocate. Um, no, we, I mean, we are encouraging people to go out and find these speaking engagements. So it's, you do not have to uh, get the engagement approved by us, but certainly there are the rules around the, the toolkit. What we really ask you to do is to give us the feedback. I mean, let us know when you're speaking. We'd love to know to whom you're speaking and where you're going to do it. We want to keep track of these engagements because we're hoping that a lot of them uh, uh, materialize. So do let us know and let us know if we can be of any further help. But definitely, we'd love to get the feedback from an event. Tell us what event you attended in terms of uh, you know, to whom you spoke, where you spoke, what the response was, and certainly what the questions are or any other follow-up. We want to be keeping track of what you're doing um, just to get a sense of, of the word getting out there. 
So we have um, a number of uh, additional questions. Can I be a WIN advocate if I am on my way to CFP certification but not yet certified? Uh, first of all, we wholeheartedly encourage you to proceed with your certification. Uh, after all, the whole purpose of WIN is to get women um, like you to become CFP professionals. Unfortunately, you may not be a WIN advocate until you receive your certification, but there's still plenty that you can do. Uh, certainly, you can get involved in financial literacy efforts with, your, with girls groups in your area. Um, you can support efforts, diversity efforts in your workplace. You can certainly uh, mentor other women and encourage other women to get on the path you're on and uh, identify speaking opportunities for us and stay in touch with us, stay informed, and continue to uh, be on our volunteer list. So um, there, uh, another question is, can you say more about um, uh, the distinction between uh, attractiveness to women professionals of a fee-only firm uh, versus a commission-based firm? So our WIN research suggests that, as Eleanor mentioned, women may be reluctant to enter the financial planning profession because of the variability of compensation involved. So for some women, the prospect of commission-based or assets under management-based comp uh, uh, compensation structure, as opposed to a salary, uh, presents risks that that are difficult barriers, particularly for women who are entering in the pre and into the profession. Um, many women we have found desire the opportunity to participate on a team with more experienced planners before being expected to generate revenues that form her primary method of compensation. So this goes to the issue of uh, firms looking at how they can create a pathway, particularly uh, for young women uh, into the profession. What about, uh, there's another question, what about the diverse, other diversity uh, issues so with respect to other um, minorities? Will CFP board be addressing these populations as well? Um, so let me just say that CFP board is committed to expanding the diversity of CFP professionals in the financial planning profession. We see it as a moral and a business imperative. We started with addressing the disparity of women CFP professionals with our WIN initiative, but plan to use the WIN model uh, to begin a discussion about how to address the lack of diversity within the profession uh, writ large. All of this takes uh, resources, and we are hopeful that we can tap into commitments with financial firms who share our commitment to expanding diversity uh, to help fund not only our continued win efforts, uh, but our broader diversity efforts. So we have another question. Um, will you be offering any additional training for win advocates, Eleanor? Well, I think the answer to that, this really is our first training, if you will, or first announcement of WIN Advocates. And obviously, as more people sign up, we will, uh, again, have to rip, you know, repeat or expand this, this webcast. So certainly, uh, we do anticipate that we will have more webcasts like this, which will be needed. But as far as additional training goes, we're really looking to you for feedback on what you're doing. And this is this, this I emphasized in uh, a, a response to another question. Um, really, the responses and the feedback that you will get from the groups and communities that you speak to and the specific ways we can help you deliver the WIM message, we want to know this. You know, in other words, your work and your reports back to CFP board will be important in defining what additional support you may need as a WIN advocate in the future. So certainly, we're going to we're going to be along uh, for the ride with you on this. And so, tell us what you need. Tell us what you're finding, and we will respond. 
So we have another question. Um, <clears throat> my broker dealer is uh, doing a great deal of development on getting younger advisors in through succession planning. This would be a great way to get institutions involved with promoting women uh, because the average age of advisors is 55 years old. Uh, that is a, um, a, very, a critically important uh, point, both the um, aging out of our advisor profession and the need to do succession planning and agree completely that the WIN initiative is a very important uh, opportunity, uh, particularly for large firms. And so uh, just to reiterate, another, one, another um, uh, uh, person uh, in, asked for the top five ways a broker-dealer can be more attractive to women advisors. I think we touched upon some of this in our presentation. Uh, but just uh, a commitment to diversity at the very top level, uh, promotion of CFP certification, particularly for women, the, the education uh, and the competence that comes with CFP certification. Our research shows uh, allows women to get um, uh, a, a much, much, much more, feel much more confident and have uh, a much better start in the career of financial advice. Um, develop a sponsorship or mentorship program at the firm to encourage and to promote women. Uh, provide uh, a career path for women that can help alleviate some of the um, aversion to risk that women feel uh, for uh, uh, compensation models that rest entirely upon performance uh, and, uh, and have a transparent compensation structure. So I think that those are some of the ways that uh, our findings suggest, particularly that, the, that uh, um, many of the top firms can be uh, more attractive to women, but we're happy to have uh, further uh, discussions with anyone who wants to contact us about specific ways that, that we can be of assistance. So let me extend uh, another invitation to see if there are any more questions uh, that uh, people may have about this um, initiative. Seeing none, let me just close by um, extending our heartfelt thanks to all of you who participated. This is a very important initiative. As I mentioned earlier, it's a marathon, not a sprint. We need your participation. We invite all of you who believe that you have a story to tell and that you can make a contribution as a WIN advocate to go to our um, uh, WIN page and sign on. It's a very simple and straightforward application process. And uh, we will then be providing you with the tools uh, to uh, uh, to take this win message out to all of your, um, uh, all of the various different organizations and groups in your local community. Uh, the uh, win page is it's at cfp.net slash win advocate. Um, so again, thank you very much for your participation and uh, do we have one more question here yeah, before I close? Enthusiastic response. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you again for your participation and for your interest. And we hope to see many of you log on and sign up to be WIN advocates. Uh, look forward to receiving more of our WIN newsletters. And we will definitely be staying in contact with you. Stay in contact with us. Thank you very, very much.